he might be the most important scientist you've never heard of. For some reason, Ronald Malick, theoretical physicist at the University of Connecticut, doesn't get the same media coverage as others. But he's working on something that's arguably more important than anything else, a working time machine. When he was 10, his father died of an unexpected heart attack. He was just 33 years old. Burying himself in science fiction books, Malick came across an illustrated version of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. I knew at that moment this was the answer to my prayers, because if I could build a time machine, I could go back and see him again, and maybe save his life," he said in an interview in 2012. But this isn't just fiction. Mallet has made meaningful advances toward a device known as a ring laser that could hold the key to time travel. How would it work? And is it possible? We'll discuss. We're a science channel covering academic papers in detail. Subscribe to join us. The crux of Mallet's time travel device would rely on a ring laser. This device is composed of two beams of light traveling in opposing directions, a closed loop. We use these as gyroscopes, for example, for things like ships and planes. A ring laser gyroscope emits light in opposite directions around the ring. If the ring is stationary, the light will take an equal amount of time to reach a detector. When the ring is rotating inside a craft, one beam will reach the detector before the other. At really small scales, the device measures the interference pattern between both beams, which tells the gyroscope about things like speed and direction. Dr. Mallet's technical papers show he wants to use a circulating light beam for something else, to generate its own gravitational field. Mallet's solutions to Einstein's field equations show that electromagnetic radiation coming off a ring laser can produce gravity. Mallet theorizes this can be amplified by shaping the light into a long, circulating cylinder. In an infinitely long, circulating cylinder of light, the physicist's calculations show it creates what are known as closed time-light curves, or CTCs. This doesn't break general relativity. The normal arrow of time for anything inside the light beam can be twisted into a loop. This means one can travel along the loop from the past to the present and to the future, but at the end of the loop, the future reconnects with the past. Now, stay with us. Here's where it gets strange. One theoretical consequence of CTCs is that something going into the past in one would have always been a part of the past it traveled to. This may suggest a time traveler could only observe the past but not change it since they were already there. The popular TV show Lost follows this idea. The characters go back in time to try and change the past, but they can't because they were always a part of the past and were one reason the past actually happened how it did. Another issue with a closed timeline curve? The traveler can only go back to the point in time when the loop was created, so one couldn't go to a time before the circulating light beam was turned on. Mallet is a theoretical physicist and has shown that this is technically possible. But experimentally, this still needs to be explored and is expensive. The Large Hadron Collider costs nearly $5 billion, and that merely crashes beams of protons together. To twist light with enough intensity to twist space-time is another challenge entirely. Whether or not this is feasible is up for debate. A paper from physicists at Tufts University suggests CTCs occur at distances from the machine greater than the radius of the visible universe. However, it's possible light could be passed through a superfluid and slowed, reducing the energy requirements. Another possibility is tweaking Mallet's idea and instead creating what's known as a Tipler cylinder. In 1974, Frank Tipler showed that inside an infinitely long cylinder 10 times the mass of the sun rotating along its axis several billion times a minute, closed timelight curves could be created. A ship traveling in the right direction could go backwards along a CTC inside the cylinder. But we need more discoveries to move this forward. Perhaps someone with an expertise in superfluids can figure out how to twist light by directing it through a medium that doesn't require as much energy. Or perhaps there's a yet-to-be-discovered metamaterial or metacrystal that holds the key. We'll be waiting, but in the meantime, Ronald Mallet is absolutely someone you should be paying attention to. Subscribe in case you haven't for future coverage of studies like this and hit the notification bell. And if you've missed our older episodes in this series, check them out in the video description.